So for some context, um, <clears throat> a researcher can use an electron's response to a magnetic field to actually measure a complex structure like a protein. And at the mag lab, we have the high powered electron magnetic resonance spectrometer or hyper, which allows the researchers to determine the structure's characteristics. But in some research projects, the hyper is um, limited by its sensitivity. So to uh, improve this, we can add a resonator. A resonator amplifies the microwave magnetic field of the sample, which increases the sensitivity. So um, in order for this resonator to work with hyper, we need to resonate near 94 gigahertz, and it needs to have tuning capabilities or the ability to fix the resonance if the sample or something else changes it. Um, the goal is to minimize the electric field at the sample and maximize the magnetic field at the sample. In these animations, we have the different ways that the electric field has formed. Uh, so the areas where there's red, you can see that there's a, a high electric field. And then the blue areas, there's a low electric field. Minimizing the electric field means that we are preventing ourselves from overheating or damaging the sample. And maximizing the magnetic field actually increases the sensitivity. So to do this with the resonator, you have to change the dimension because that drives the resonant frequency and the actual um, formation of the electric and magnetic fields. So what I've done is I've changed the irises radius or the coupling hole where the microwaves actually enter and the resonant cavities radius and length, and that changes how the electric and magnetic fields form. So after simulating the dimensions, I've observed that the cavities radius actually tunes the resonant frequency and the irises radius and cavities length maximize the magnetic field inside the resonator. These dimensions are also weakly coupled, so that means that if you change one dimension, you slightly change the influence that the other dimensions have, so you got to be careful when you're changing. Um, this picture in the bottom left shows the electric field and magnetic field resonating near 94 gigahertz with a strong magnetic field in the center of the cavity. And then here is the actual fabricated resonator with a penny for scale. This graph shows the power absorption near resonance. So uh, this resonant dip shows that it's resonating near 94 gigahertz and it shows you how much more the sensitivity has increased at resonance. So in general, by creating a resonator, a researcher can study more complex structures with increased magnetic resonance sensitivity, which allows for a gr uh, greater range of use for hyper without the need to change the instrumentation. So um, this allows us to save time, money, and electricity. Uh, the next steps for this project would be to test the resonator on hyper and to design two other types of cavities that allow for an even wider range of use for hyper. Um, I'd like to take this time to thank everybody that supported me through this research experience and all of the REU students, you guys have been awesome. And everybody that's watching, thank you so much for supporting us.